What's up everybody, it's Commodex, and welcome back to another Ranked Draft of Corset 2020. Let's hop right in and see if we can get some good stuff. So this opening pack is pretty great. We have Shifting Ceratops, which is an excellent rare. 4 mana for a 5-4, and it can't be countered and has protection from blue. Those don't matter as often as the rest of the abilities, which are for a single green mana, it gets Reach, Trample, or Haste until end of turn. So that card is obviously just great. It's already just uh, ahead of the curve in terms of mana cost, just a 4 mana 5-4, even if it didn't have any text on the card at all, that would already be a pretty good card to pick up. The fact that it also has that versatility of being able to get reach against flyers or trample against chump blockers or haste if you've just got 5 mana and want to bash them in makes it a very, very good rare. Uh, so I'm probably just going to go with that. There are some pretty good cards here as well. Frostlink's definitely one of the best blue creatures. Can slow down your opponent from killing you or just tap down blockers while you get aggressive. Uh, Dawning Angel is a fine white card for your blue-white flyers decks. Agonizing Siphon's fine removal. Audacious Thief can draw a bunch of cards. And then obviously, I mean obviously, if you've played... Ranked draft, of course, at 2020 at all recently. You know all about your sanitarium skeletons and your heart piercer bows because they are absolutely everywhere right now. So <laughs> it is worth mentioning them. All right, so I'm starting off with a shifting ceratops in that pack. So this pack, there's only one green card. It's a thicket crasher, which is just a fine card. Four mana for a four three trample is an okay threat. A little bit low on the toughness end, but nothing nothing too bad or too impressive, to be fair. So we might take something in another color here. I like Boreal Elemental a whole lot. Definitely one of my favorite uh, blue creatures in the set. 5 mana for a 3-4 flying, and it's a little hard to target. Your opponent's going to have to pay 2 additional mana to do so. Goblin Smuggler is a card that's been very impressive as well. 3 mana for a 2-2 haste, and it can give... Creatures of power two or less unblockable until end of turn, and there are several creatures that it combos very well with in this set. The main one being the Ember Brawler, the four mana two four that gets plus one power for each elemental you control when it attacks. So those are all great. Uh, Ancestral Blade is a card I like a lot. Uh, I just really like um, all of the equipments that come with creatures, as I've said in basically every draft, because it's kind of like two cards in one. Um, so yeah, those are all pretty good. Scuttlemutt is just like the safest pick. It's just a card we can always cast no matter what three lands we have, and it helps fix our mana no matter what colors we end up in. So Scuttlemutt is the really safe pick if I want to just stay open to whatever is going to come down the line. Uh, Thicket Crasher is also a decently safe pick, but it does marry us to green a little bit more than if we just had the Ceratops. Uh, and then, you know, Boreal Elemental just is my favorite, like, strong card here. Oh, Vampire of the Dire Moon is definitely worth mentioning as well. Uh, just, like, little 1 mana, 1 1 Death Touchers can hold down the fort pretty well. And until your opponent plays a creature, you can just start pinging him for a little bit of lifelink in the early game. Anyways, I'm just going to take Boreal Elemental here. I probably like that card way too much. I feel like I end up in blue-green a whole lot of the time, but it looks like it's going to happen again here because my favorite card... Well, not my favorite. I mean, Gravedigger's probably my favorite card here, but Cloudkin Seer is a very close second, and I've already taken a blue card. So I think I am just going to take Cloudkin Seer here. So Cloudkin Seer, 3 mana, 2, 1 flyer when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Just very nice value. Just replace, replaces itself when you cast it. Um, and Gravedigger is another card that's pretty similar and just it has really good value because you're getting a 2-2 as well as getting another creature back from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, however, definitely less impressive on the board than Cloud Can See Her, but it grabs a guaranteed good card. It's going to pick up whatever your best creature in your grave is, whereas Cloud Can See Her, you're just drawing a card. You could just draw land when you don't need it. You never know. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to take Cloud Can See Her here. All right, so we've got Meteor Golem, definitely a classic at this point. I mean, it's only been in two core sets, but uh, M19 M and M20, pretty similar. Like, it's 
Kind of an expensive card, it's a 7 mana 3-3, three, three, but the fact that you just get a consistent removal spell in literally any deck, regardless of color, uh, is very nice. It's a card you can pick up and just be be very confident that it can end up in your deck as a decent card early in the draft. So I like Meteor Golem a lot here for that reason. There are some other good cards in here. Raise the Alarm is like just a very cheap uh, token producer and... Token producers are pretty good in this set because there's a lot of token payoffs and not a lot of token producers. And this card's nice because you can just randomly like trade off your opponent's 2-1 out of nowhere while still having a 1-1 set aside. Audacious Thief is good because you get to draw a bunch of cards. And Gift of Paradise is good at fixing mana and ramping up. Uh, but I'm just going to take Meteor Golem here. I have not played... I don't think I've played a single Meteor Golem in in this limited format up to this point, uh, so I'm excited to start now. Um, not a crazy good pack here. Um, yeah, I mean, the only stuff in our colors, in just green and blue, that I'm particularly interested in would just be like a Mammoth Spider. Moat Piranhas is definitely fine if you're a very controlling deck, or... Like, if you're just playing a deck where you're not planning on attacking all that often anyway, uh, or you need something to just hold down the ground for your flyers, then this card's fine. But I think blue-green is definitely not the color combination for that, because I'm already going to have just decently sized green creatures. I don't need a random defender to do that. Um, Portal of Sanctuary has a few cards that it can combo pretty well with. Um, I guess it combos well with Cloud Seer and Meteor Golem. I just... I feel like my problem with this card is so... So much of the time, it it's like three mana to do nothing until you draw something that ETBs. And even then, you have to dump a lot of mana into it to get your value out of it. So, like, the best thing I'm doing here is replaying Meteor Golems, which is great, but that's if I happen to draw my one portal and my one Meteor Golem. Otherwise, recasting Cloud Conceers, that's I'm spending three mana to do nothing immediately because I'm playing the artifact. And then I'm spending three mana to play my Cloudkin. And then I'm spending one mana to bounce it and three more to play it. So it's basically like an engine that now for four mana I can draw a card, and that's only if I'm in a situation where I don't even want to attack with my Cloud Conceer anyway. I don't know. It's it's an interesting card, but it's like really bold in my opinion. So Mammoth Spider, I think, is pretty probably the best creature in this pack, but I'm already blue-green, I've got some flyers, so I don't really need the reach. Uh, so I might just take Ferocious Pup, and Ferocious Pup would me give me another thing that combos with the Portal of Sanctuary, if the portal wheels. You know, I feel like I kind of want to do something a little different, a little interesting today. I say that most days, and then it just ends up with me drafting an unplayable pile, but I'm going to do it anyway. I haven't played the Portal of Sanctuary yet. I want to try it out. Like, theoretically... Theoretically, if I ever get to a situation where I can just start recasting Meteor Golem, that's just brutal. And if I draft it early, I can start very heavily taking more ETB effects like Cloud Seer. So I'm going to try out the Portal of Sanctuary. <laughs> and uh, we'll see if that goes anywhere. So there's an Anticipate, a Thicket Crasher, or a Mammoth Spider here. Those are pretty much the only cards I'm heavily considering. I think I kind of want to just take a Thicket Crasher here. I do have two Elementals already. I've got a Boreal Elemental and a Cloud Conseer. So if I take Thicket Crasher, then I have three Elementals. This will give my other Elementals Trample. And if I happen to be able to pick up... Um, a Risen Reef or something like that. I've already got a decent stack of elementals to get bonuses off of it. Here, I like Pattern Marcher a lot. Pattern Marcher is a card that, if you've been watching my draft videos, I've drafted just so many copies of this card. Um, and I think I'm going to take one again. Fairy Miscreants, I've tried a couple times and it always felt like a trap to me, even when I got a bunch of them. Didn't end up being that good. And as I said before, Moat Piranha is not really for blue-green. Uh, and Bone to Ash is a good card that I like a lot. But it does require you to have four mana up and at the ready. Which is probably going to be a little bit difficult in a deck like this. Where I feel like I want to just keep dropping down a creature every turn on curve. And not really saving any mana up. So I'm going to drop a Pattern Marcher down 
in this pack. Alright, this pack is bad. I guess we can take Anticipate and just help us fill out the deck a little bit. It just helps us sift through the cards to draw whatever we need. Uh, and Zephyr Charge and Plummet are both very unexciting in my opinion. Uh, for a blue-green deck. Here we can take a bow. And the skeleton. The bow and the skeleton are still here. So if you're one of those people, there you go. They're at the ready. Um, yeah, nothing that exciting here. I'm just going to take your growth cycle. Just a nice little pump spell you could surprise your opponent with. Uh, and just kill one of their creatures with it. And if you pick up multiple copies, it just keeps getting better. Here I will take a Metropolis Sprite. And here I'll take a Wolfkin Bond. I just don't think I'm going to touch Fairy Miscreant again for at least a few drafts. And now we're just taking some cards that I'm not very excited about. All right. Here we go. We have pack two. Pick one. So we have a few really good options here. Actually, a lot of really good options here. Uh, this pack is pretty good on the blue-green front. So Drawn from Dreams is a pretty powerful draw spell. You get to look at the top seven cards of your library and pick the best two cards out of them to put into your hand. So a very good draw spell. Definitely lets you find your bombs, find your removal, whatever you need at the time. Archive Troll is a nice, cheap, aggressive creature. Two mana for a 3-3, and for one mana, you can turn it into a 2-2 two -two and give it Hexproof till end of turn. Uh, Frost Lynx is nice, as I've said before. Both on the aggressive and the defensive, just tapping down a creature and having that creature stay tapped is a very nice ability. Uh, and Silverback Shaman is fine, because it's just a threat on its own. Five mana, five for Trample, as well as giving you a card when it dies so it kind of replaces itself when it dies uh, and then there's also obviously just like thornwood falls just the perfect mana fixing for blue green is just a blue green duel so that is definitely a card worth taking there i think i'm just gonna take the rare uh because i think that like drawn from dreams bark hide troll like i think honestly all of the cards i just mentioned are all really nice for this deck so i think there's an argument for like any of those uh, but So I'm just going to take the rarest one, uh, just for collection slash gems purposes. Alright, now here's going to be a pretty difficult pick. Another pack with a lot of really good options. First of all, we don't have any removal except for a 7 mana Meteor Golem currently, so it's definitely worth thinking about Sleep Paralysis, as it is a fine removal spell. It's the only removal... That is in the pack. Um, well, outside of Meteor Golem, which I will now talk about. Meteor Golem, we could take the second Meteor Golem, and then we definitely have the ability to bounce those things with Portal of Sanctuary. The only problem is then I have two seven mana dudes, uh, which means I definitely need to start picking up some ramp cards. And then I can also start picking up some ramp cards. There's Leafkin Druid and Gift of Paradise, both fine ramp cards if I want to pick that up. I think if I'm taking a ramp card here, I'm probably just going to take the Leafkin Druid. As it is an elemental, I already have a decent amount of elementals. And I have a decent amount of creatures to possibly get to that ability where it taps for double green. Uh, and then there's Cerulean Drake, which is like, whatever. It's just a 1-1, but if you happen to be playing against red, it's very good. Alright. Ah, uh, God. You know, it's a good problem to have that these packs have just had a bunch of good options, but it is also still a problem, and it confuses me. So I'm going to go ahead and take another Meteor Golem. We're just going to go for it. Just, oh no, no. <sighs> these packs are too good. So we have the exact same two ramp cards, which now we need even more than we needed them last pick, because now we have two seven drops. There's Rabid Bite, which is a removal spell, which we do need removals. And there's Air Elemental, which is just a savage, savage, aggressive bomb. Just 5 mana for a 4-4 four, four flyer is very thick, very hard to deal with. 
Yeah, this pack is quite good. There's also another Pattern Marcher, but I haven't managed to pick up very many duplicates of any creatures yet, so the second Pattern Marcher uh, does not seem super, super impressive. All right. What, what do we do here? I'm going to look at my curve. Yep. <laughs> Bunch of four mana and greater. Lots of large stuff here. I think I can play Sage's Row Denison, because Sage's Row Denison with Portal is a little bit of a combo. Just keep replaying Cloudkin here and milling my opponent. <laughs> that seems dumb, but it is it is a combo. As is Portal plus Healer of the Glade. I mean, that's, that's even more loose than I'm just spending two mana to gain three life whenever I want. I guess that's okay. Yeah, I'm just going to put every... Everything that I technically can cast with the islands or forests in this deck for now, and then start cutting cards as we reach uh, enough cards for this deck here. Oh my god, this pick is so hard. It's so difficult. I am going to be dumb. I'm going to be dumb and take, take the aggressive flyer. The big monster. All right, well, here we have a simple pack because there's not a lot of choices for blue-green. We're just going to take a bright wood check. <laughs> and now we are really, really hurting for ramp and removal. And here's another pack with Leaf Can Druid and Gift of Paradise. That's three packs in this round that have had both of the good green ramp spells. That's kind of insane. Well, at this point, we really need to take some of the green ramp. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a Leaf Can Druid here. All right, now, not the most exciting pack. We have like Convolute or a Wolfkin Bond or a Greenwood Sentinel. Um, I don't like any of those that much, but I think I like Greenwood Sentinel the most. Just have a little more early game creatures, so maybe we can hit the four creatures for the double green off Leafkin Druid. <laughs> Alright, what do we got now? We got Octo Prophet, which is a very nice card. Four mana for a 3-3, and it scries two when it enters the battlefield. Mama Spider's okay, but as I've said before, we are in blue-green. We've got multiple flyers. We also have Shifting Ceratops. We've probably got the Reach slash Flyers side of things covered. Uh, and there's a Brineborn Cutthroat, which can be pretty cool, but I don't think this is the deck for it. I have, like... I have three instants right now, not really a lot of stuff that'll work super well with the Cutthroat. So I'm going to go ahead and just take the Octoprofit here. It just seems to fit this deck, like, the most. I feel like we're just going to be a pile of creatures. Maybe even just a pile of creatures trying to get a lot of creatures with ETB effects as well to use the Portal of Sanctuary. So just a pile of creatures with Enter the Battlefield effects. That's... That's the deck I'm going for here, and I guess if I'm going for that, I can take another Sage's Row Denizen, because I'm not really missing out on a lot. Aethergust is not a card that I'm going to play, because it is a best-of-one format, so I'm not just going to play this card and hope that I play against red or green, because if I don't, then I essentially just had a six-card hand at the start of the game, instead of a seven-card hand, which is a pretty big downside. Uh, so I'm just going to take Sage's Row Denizen. All right, so we got the blue-green, dual land, or we got the centaur courser. I think I'm just going to take the duel here. I do like the three mana three three, but I think we're getting to a point where I'm actually going to try to have my three drops just be a bunch of sages row denizens, because those do tend to go pretty late. So I think I'll be good to have my three drop slot filled. Uh, and I'm going to be the, the cheeky doofus with two Sages or Denizens on board trying to Portal of Sanctuary and just keep recasting blue creatures. I don't know what I'm doing with my life, but this is it. All right, so we got a Gift of Paradise wield. We're absolutely taking it. Another Gift of Paradise wield. We're absolutely taking it. That is the value of having those packs that had two good ramp cards in them. If they didn't have Leafkin Druid and Gift of Paradise, I don't think those would have wield. But since they had both... We got to wheel some ramp cards there, so that was very nice for us. Now we're just set in terms of ramp. We've got three ramp spells, Leaf Kindred plus Double Gift of Paradise to get up to these Meteor Golems. Yeah, this deck is shaping up a bit. It's definitely weird and not fantastic, but we're, 
we're getting there. Uh, I don't really think I need Sea Serpent. I've just got, like, some flying dudes. And if I hit, like, six to seven mana, if I hit that mana range, I'm just casting Meteor Golem, so I'll probably... Oops. Probably be fine. Almost take the card that I just said I don't really need. Now we'll have a Convolute. I don't think that I'm gonna run that as of now. Alright. That is a sad... Sad card to open here. That is a Johnny, Strength of the Pride, which it's a Planeswalker. It's obviously going to be quite good. Four mana for a five loyalty walker. Plus one to gain life equal to the number of creatures and Planeswalkers you control. Minus two to create a 2-2 two -two of Johnny's Pride Mate that gets plus one plus one counter whenever you gain life. And zero if you have at least 15 life more than your starting life total. Exile of Johnny and each artifact creature your opponents control. That's just insane. I mean, like a four mana, basically four mana, you can get into Johnny's Pride Mate and have a three loyalty Planeswalker there. So if you have played a couple creatures to back him up, it's going to be really hard for your opponent to hit him. So then you could just like get another 2-2 two -two off of him. Like, I feel like it's pretty easy to get a lot of value off this guy. Like, that seems pretty good. However, we're not in white. But we have two Gift of Paradise, which does tap for two mana of any one color. So we can cast a Johnny's Pride Mate if we have either of our Gift of Paradises out. So that is the thing about Gift of Paradise. Once you have a few copies, it is worth noting that if there's cards that you would splash into your deck if you only had three or four sources of that color, Gift of Paradise works towards those color sources. So... Maybe we just take a Johnny here and really hope to pick up one or two more Gift of Paradise, and then if so, we can play him. If not, we just keep him in the sideboard and we missed out on, like, a Netcaster Spider here, which isn't the worst thing in the world. So, I'm gonna take a Johnny and hope I can pick up some more Gift of Paradise, and if I can't, I might just throw him in the sideboard, or I might throw in a couple planes. I am proud of we'll all see. Those who stand up wow. <laughs> Wow, we'll see what happens here. And then we open Safara Sky's Blade. Now, this is a lot harder to cast than a Johnny. And I mean a lot. It's a seven mana card, and it requires three white instead of two white. But if I have a Johnny and Safara, I already have the ramp cards for trying to hit seven mana stuff. If I have a Johnny and Safara, I can definitely just throw some planes in here and just decide, yeah, we're green, blue, splashing white for some bombs. I think I'm actually just going to take Safara here. And we're just totally going for it. We are just going for it. Wow, Risen Reef? Ooh, all right. Well, that is what I was talking about when I was saying we should be picking up these random elementals. And that definitely makes me want to try the stupid Portal of Sanctuary shenanigans. Because if I get a Risen Reef on the board and then I start portaling just a one-mana healer of the Glade, I'm going to draw so many cards off of the Risen Reef's ability. That's insane. All right, this deck is probably not going to work out at all. It's going to be like a finely tuned like gear machine, except it's missing several cogs. <laughs> You know, like, it's just not going to be correct. But I'll try. Alright, what do we have here? Not, like, a lot. We can just take Thicket Crasher because it's another elemental. Definitely seems fine to me. And we do want some more copies of some stuff for Pattern Marcher. Because right now, the only thing that we'd be Pattern Marching is a Sage's Rodenism. Uh, so I definitely want a few more cards to have duplicates in this deck. So Thicket Crasher would be worth picking for that reason. Uh, Pulse of Mirasa can be really good as well. You can just play this late game to get back one of your bomb creatures. Or like if a Meteor Golem killed something and then just like chum blocked, that could get back a Meteor Golem with Pulse of Mirasa. Which is definitely a pretty strong late game card. Um, Yeah, I think it's between Pulse of Mirasa and Thicket Crasher. I think they're both fine choices. I'm gonna take... What am I gonna take? That is always the question. I'm gonna go ahead and take Thicket Crasher. Alright. Well then. Well then. If I'm already splashing in white, I can splash in the best green-white uncommon. Three mana for an O5 with power equal to the number of creatures you control. And for 5 mana, 
you get to create a 1-1 white soldier creature token. So just a very good mana sink as you get to the late game. And even without that, it's a 3-mana 1-5 at worst. If you have any other creatures, it's just very juicy for the mana cost. Just 2-5 or 3-5. Very strong card. Um, I am passing up a Leafkin Druid here. Which, you know, I've got a lot of <laughs> a lot of stuff in these higher mana costs, so Leaf Kindred would be a good pick. Uh, as would Netcaster Spider or Winged Words. There are good cards here. We definitely want to wheel one of these. I don't know how likely it is. Uh, but I'm going to take Iron Root or Ward. Alright, what do we got? Um, Probably going to be Sleep Paralysis here. It's like between Sleep Paralysis and Aerial Assault. Uh, we are still in the kind of position where we really need removal. And I think it's just more safe to take the blue removal than the white removal because white is definitely the color we're splashing in whereas blue is just solidly one of our colors so i'm just gonna go ahead and take sleep paralysis okay we have netcaster spider or another thicket crasher or a mammoth spider or a furled sea serpent I'm probably going to take the Netcaster Spider here just because our mana costs have gotten very awkward. We have a gigantic stack of 4-drops. I think I should probably probably lay off on the 4-drops for a bit. But at the same time, we've got a lot of 3-drops as well. Uh, here I'm going to take Centaur Courser because I already have a Centaur Courser, so it helps us get our Pattern Marcher value. And I think I'm a little more concerned with getting Pattern Marcher value than... Um, then uh, Portal of Sanctuary value, because I already have some cool stuff to try to do with Portal of Sanctuary. So I'm going to take Centaur Courser. And another Netcaster Spider. Well, maybe I should have taken Ferocious Pup, because if I took Ferocious Pup, I could get the second Ferocious Pup here, and then Pattern Marcher works, and it's another card for Portal of Sanctuary to just start making a bunch of tutus. So that's a little rough, but I am going to take the Netcaster Spider. It gives me another card... Uh, to hit up with the Pattern Marcher. And I I don't think I'm actually going to do the Sages or Denison thing at this point. I have so many cards in this deck, I need to cut a lot of stuff. I think I'm probably going to cut the Sages or Denison shenanigans. We might even get it, be getting to the point where I'm going to cut the Portal of Sanctuary shenanigans, if I'm being completely honest, which was kind of what we were thinking about doing like when we started this deck. It was like, let's try Portal of Sanctuary shenanigans, and now it's kind of just... Let's try splashing in white bombs. Um, so, you know, our priorities have changed. Just, it happens with life. You know, things things change. It happens. Wow, triple netcaster is very nice. That was a very late netcaster spider there. All right, we got some gems, because apparently one of the rares is something I already owned a playset of. So, very nice. That'll give me some more gems towards... Uh, some Throne of Eldraine when that comes out. I think until then I'm going to try to just save all my gems, because I already got the M20 Mastery Pass out of gems from playing a bunch of ranked drafts. So there's really nothing else I need to spend gems on until the next set comes out. Anyways, we have to cut 13 cards! <laughs> so let's get ready for that. Definitely a little nervous I didn't pick up any more Gift of Paradises. I think there's definitely going to be some situations here where I'm... Having some trouble casting our white cards, but I do think that they're strong enough that it is worth uh, the potential troubles in mana that we'll be having. So I'm just going to start off right now and just ruin everyone's day and take out Healer of the Glade and Portal of Sanctuary and the Sage's Row and Denizens and just say that that is not the dream that is being lived today. I do like Anticipate with a bunch of bombs and three colors. Because uh, Anticipate helps us get whatever we need. If we see our third color in those cards, we get to draw that. If we see a crazy bomb, we get to draw that. I think Anticipate should be pretty good in this deck. Um, we've got a, just a gigantic stack of 4 mana cards, so maybe we want to lower those a little bit. Maybe we don't need Brightwood Trackers in this deck. I still like having at least one, but I don't think we need two. Um... I think enough of our creatures are just strong enough by themselves. We probably don't need Wolfkin Bond. Now what? I still have to cut seven cards here? How does this happen? Oh my god. Alright. Uh, guess Growth Cycle? Alright. How many Elementals do we have? We got one, two, three, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't think I want to cut any of the elementals. Except Healer of the Glade. I'm sorry, Healer of the Glade. Uh, just cut a couple Centaur Courser. And then, like, when we cast Pattern Marcher, we're just, like, really hoping to have one of our spiders out. I guess, or our Thicket Crasher. Maybe we even just cut Pattern Marcher at this point. Like, that seems fair enough. If I cut Pattern Marcher, then I don't even have to keep all the Netcaster spiders. Like, I can cut one of those as well. Uh, good god. The, the curve is just so awkward here. It's just a gigantic pile at three and four. It's not really a curve. So, for, if anyone doesn't know, a curve is like, you want your mana curve to be like one, two, three, four, five, you know, you want it to be like a, a little uh, bowl curve. Uh, but here it's kind of just a stack right here. All right, three more cards we gotta cut. Three more cards. Oh, I'm gonna cut a Thicket Crasher. I ended up cutting an Elemental, so sad days. We won't be doing as much stuff with Risen Reef. For certain. I guess I already have Drawn from Dreams for like really drawing into our good stuff. Uh, so maybe we don't even need Brightwood Tracker. If we just have Double Anticipate and Drawn from Dreams, that's kind of accomplishing the same thing, while also not being just, like, another card to just dump out on turn four. I feel like that slot is pretty heavily contested right now. So we can take Brightwood Tracker out. Then maybe we can even just take out, like, one Anticipate and run it like that, or one Netcaster. Just take like a Greenwood Sentinel out, but I don't really like not having like any two drop creatures. Oh boy. I just take out Metropolis Sprite. That's still just taking out a green creature, but I feel like Greenwood Sentinel is going to block a lot more often than Metropolis Sprite, and I think that's the main goal of our cheap creatures, is just to block things so that we can survive until we can do something like a Johnny or Golem or Safara or Elemental. So I think... I think that's what we're going with. Let's go ahead and suit up. I did not change the sleeve, I just clicked on Bolas and nothing happened. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and what do we need out of our lands here? I don't think we need five planes. With two Gift of Paradise, I don't think we need five planes. I think we definitely need the most forests, because those let us cast our Gift of Paradise. So maybe we just go like that and throw two more forests in. Uh... Like, I think we have to just assume the only time we're ever casting Safara is if we have a Gift of Paradise out. Safara is cast by Gift of Paradise plus Planes. That's how we're casting Safara. <laughs> Whereas a Johnny, we could cast with two Planes or with one Gift of Paradise. So I think, yeah, four Planes is like a nice number if that's how we're assuming we're casting our stuff. Alright, I don't have the Full Art Planes yet. Is that the only one I don't have yet? See, I've got the blue, black, red, green. Yep, <laughs> alright. Well, that's sad. I guess I'm not going to do Full Arts then. We'll we'll stick with the Rebecca Gay art, uh, which is pretty beautiful as well. It's just not Full Art. And I like to have all of my lands be uniform, so I was planning on making them all Full Arts, but then I forgot that the final Planecation event has not happened yet, so I don't have the Full Art Planes. <laughs> that is the only one. That I'm missing. So we'll just run it with these basics and toss in a couple more forests. Oop. And we are go. This might be. Yeah, this is a little forest heavy. We only have one card that needs double green. We can drop out one forest and put that island back in. 
but I do like dropping one planes from what it recommended and throwing in another forest instead of that. All right. This deck is weird. I don't like it a whole lot, <laughs> but I don't hate it. We'll certainly see how well these bombs play out here. All right, my apologies if you can hear me drinking. Out of my water bottle. All right, here we go. Ah, uh, this is definitely keepable. We just need one forest and then we can go crazy. And if we don't get a forest for a while, we have some spiders to keep us warm. We'll definitely be safe. We can block anything on the ground or in the air. Um, of course, if they play like a 3-3, then we're just chump blocking instead of making a profitable block, but it's a thing still. Alright, Safara so is probably like the worst possible draw for right now, so that's a little concerning. Steadfast Sentry. Alright, Blood Burglar into Steadfast Sentry is a pretty aggressive curve, uh, and that might do a lot of damage to us here. So we can play a Cloud Concealer to draw a card to try to make sure we hit a fourth land so we can cast one of these things. Um, which seems maybe worth it, but if we cast Netcaster Spider, they can't really attack with Blood Burglar that turn. So we can save that damage. I guess I'm just going to class Cloud Concealer. I really want to draw into a basic here for next turn. And unfortunately, that is not a basic, but it does get us closer to one. Even if the basic is five cards down, drawing a card makes it only four cards down. Oh god, alright. There is no greater treasure. Oh god. Quiet times with friends. I think we're getting clapped, boy. Alright. <sighs> that's that's a Johnny. We met him earlier, uh, in the draft itself. Um uh, and God, this is bad. I might just not block so I can poke them so at least they don't get two tutus out of them. Probably gain a bunch of life out of them, but... Alright, here are the spiders, and the plan was to have the spiders just sit on their butts and try to protect us, but unfortunately our opponents have a lot of three power creatures now. Two is not necessarily a lot, but when you're at 13 life it is. Alright, it's, uh, probably made a 4-4 now, because they gained life with Johnny's plus one. And that is terrible. Oh, god. Alright, we're at 13. About to take a lot. Let's take seven. Okay. Let's take 11. We're at two. God, alright, Gift of Paradise, you're like... Not the kind of mana I need, because you're not here immediately. I need, I need a basic. You know, to be fair, a basic does not even save us here. Like we're still very dead. So I just play net caster spider, block the five five and the three two, and die to the two two. Well, let's send a message. Let's kill a Johnny for being a dickwad. Let my friend yeah, get out of here, freaking furry boy. All right. Well, we got destroyed by our own ally. I thought a Johnny showed up to help our deck out uh, and to show off the power of Gift of Paradise, letting us randomly pick up an off-color bomb in the third pack. Uh, but a Johnny actually showed up to crush our hopes and dreams and consume our spirits. So there's that. Let's go into round two. Alright, game two. Back to the drawing board. We don't even have to talk about what just happened. Erase that from your memory, because it's a Johnny time. Alright, I said erase that from your memory, but now... <laughs> now I'm just trying to do exactly what happened to us, to our opponent. So... Maybe remember that and use that as, like, the blueprints of a successful game right here. I need to draw a Gift of Paradise, though. 
uh, if I'm going to cast this at Johnny, so it's very unlikely... <laughs> it's very unlikely that I get to just do what my opponent did to me. Because uh, it's... Uh, this at Johnny's probably not coming out in turn 4. Unless I literally draw Gift of Paradise next turn, a Johnny is not going to come out for a little while. Alright, opponent starts with a Fairy Miscreant and an Island. And now we are waiting. Here comes the Forest, looks like a blue-green mirror match. What you got? What is this? It is the clock. It is the hourglass. Heart Piercer Bow! Here it goes, ladies and gentlemen. The bow is ready. Luckily, it's just a single bow, which is not that terrifying, but it does basically prevent me from getting any value out of this Risen Reef uh, outside of when I initially cast it, because it'll just die immediately. So, I'm just going to play Netcaster Spider for now. And, yeah, it's probably just the kind of thing where Risen Reef's just going to die the turn after I play it. But, potentially, if I wait to play Risen Reef until I have 6 mana, I could play Risen Reef plus another elemental in the same turn. And then I get value. And I guess at the very least, playing a Risen Reef forces them to equip the Heart Piercer Bow, so it, it locks down one of their mana. <gasps> there it is! We could do 6 mana, 2 elementals in one turn, but we are not very close to 6 mana. We're still 2 lands away, and we don't know when they're coming, so... I think it's time to play a dead Zen Reef. Safara! Now is not the time. Alright. <laughs> I'm starting to get a little concerned that this video is about to make me look like a giant doofus, but you know what's new there? What's new there? Me over here talking about how big game Gift of Paradise is just like. It's, it makes everything so splashable. You got it, guys. Just get the Gift of Paradises. We've got two Gift of Paradise right now. If I just pick up a couple more, I can totally splash these cards. And then I don't pick up any more copies of Gift of Paradise and splash them anyway. And and now we're seeing what happens. Oh, God. That's a, <laughs> that's a thick Centaur Courser. That is... All right. It's a heart-piercing, hard... Covered Courser. That is... Okay. That is very bad. Um, I have four power over here, so I can't... Can't deal five damage to that thing. So... I believe... It will keep bashing my face... Until I die. I'm playing the Cloud Kids here, because I need to draw some cards... Oh, that's not the cards I need. I need to draw some Gifts of Paradise. Come on. Come on, top deck. Alright, there goes Cloudkin Seer. And I can't block without losing a creature. Just to save three life, so I don't want to lose a creature yet. Boreal Elemental. Alright, well, I got six mana, and now I can draw in from Dreams to make sure I hit a seventh at the very least, so at least I can play a Meteor Golem. But let's see if we can get anything better here. I could just take... Oh my god. Oh my god, I could just take Meteor Golem Basic, and then I can just blow up two things over the course of two turns. Or I can take Gift of Paradise. <sighs> I want to take that Gift of Paradise so bad, but... 
If I do that, if I just take like Gift of Paradise Meteor Golem, and I have to draw basic next turn to play a Meteor Golem next turn, or else I'm just playing Gift of Paradise into a Johnny, there's not as good. Because then a Johnny get, just gets smacked by their flyer. And if I take Gift of Paradise basic, obviously then I don't have two Meteor Golems. And I want two Meteor Golems, so there's that. I could also just take Air Elemental and Meteor Golem and just be the riskiest mofo ever. Alright, I'm taking Meteor Golem and Gift of Paradise. And... Just really hoping for a basic off the top. We're playing the risky plays here. That is for certain. You got it. I am scared. That is six mana. Exactly enough mana for a Yargos. Or whatever his name is. The super scary six mana Vigilance Hydra that blows everything up whenever he gets targeted. He's like an 8-7 Vigilance, I think. But unfortunately they did not have that at least yet. But they have another flyer, so now the pressure on me is just brutal. Oh, wait, I have a netcaster spider. Did I even take that into consideration during that whole spiel about what cards to take? Did I even take into consideration that I'm taking three a turn because I have a spider that can block any of this nonsense? Oh my god, I'm so dumb. Alright, well, you can disregard whatever I've said. It's useless information. Alright, basic land. Ooh! I picked the correct cards. Alright, Courser. Get out of my life. Who attacks? Alright, I think we're just going to take over the game now. They have two cards in hand, they don't have super good attacks, and I have another Meteor Golem to get rid of one of their flyers. And a Gift of Paradise to gain some life, and an Ajani to gain a million life. And then Safara later, maybe? Oh god, alright. Well. Well, actually, <laughs> uh, I might be dead. Uh, let's see, that's seven mana, or se seven mana, that's seven damage. I'm going to be at three life, and then I'm going to blow up Boreal Elemental and die. Ooh. That is not good. Uh, that, in fact, is uh, lethal on board levels of bad. So, Meteor Golem is no longer an option. I have to gift of paradise a Johnny and just gain a bunch of life. Let's see, I gain three life. A Johnny's plus gains life equal to number of creatures and planeswalkers, so four life. So I can gain seven life and be at ten, and then I take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's technically the only way I survive is gift of paradise plus a Johnny. Oh no, this is we're in the nonsense times here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I can't. There's just no way I can gain the three life and play Meteor Golem in the same turn. It's just impossible. I am a Johnny Goldmane. And I, will be I am a Johnny Goldmane. Alright. They're at 13. At the very least, I get to hit them back before I die. And at best... At best... They just send everyone at a Johnny. And then he staves it off a turn, and then I draw planes and cla uh, cast Safara. <laughs> that, that's at the actual best. If I can't do that, I can at least Meteor Golem. <sighs> but if I Meteor Golem at this point, oh, it's still going to be too slow, I think. I need something like better. I actually might need the Sidrani to stay on board, but I can't control whether or not my opponent kills it. Alright, opponent does kill it and does one damage to me, probably. Oh no, they're just going to keep the Drake 
uh, as a blocker. Fair enough. Johnny is dead. One card in hand from opponent. It is a mammoth spider. All right. Oh. Oh. Hello. All right. I mean, now we block the three with seven lifelink, and then I'm at 17 life, and then I don't even need to block anything else because then I take three, four, five, six, seven. I just stay at 10 life if I block and kill one thing. All right. Safara is ridiculous. Safara is a fair card, but we've been on the other side of Safara several times early on in M20 rank drafts. So. Is this, uh, is this karmic justice, or is this just joining the dark side? Let you decide. Alright, Mammoth Spider, what's up? They're looking at the spider. The spider is unfortunately not as big as the gigantic legendary angel. Although it is pretty big. Alright, um... I think I have to just, like, sit here for a little while. Let's play another Gift of Paradise, I guess, and gain some life. And then I can play an Octoprophet and try to scry into some more flyers. If I get some more... Oh, wow. Alright, that's just on bottom. If I get some more flyers, they'll be indestructible thanks to Safara, and they can just chump block forever for me while Safara gets in there to gain life. Actually, if I attack with Safara, I go to 20 life, they can crack back for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. She's a 7-7, seven, seven. they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. They have 7 power. Like, I would trade with, like, all their... F oh, wait, no, they have a Mammoth Spider. Yeah, no, attack is actually just not good here. Because of the Mammoth Spider. <laughs> Alright. I almost made a major punt. I'm sure I've made major punts earlier in this video, but I almost made a major punt that I noticed. That would have been a pretty awful attack. Alright, looks like opponent just scoops, because uh, I guess they just don't want to deal with Safara. Safara is pretty ridiculous. Alright. Got some experience, got some gold, got a win. We have one win and one loss. Let's see if we can win some more by getting Gift of Paradise on the board. To be fair, though, in the match that we lost, we could have put a Gift of Paradise on the board at the end, I think. Uh, but then I just die. I already don't remember because my memory is that bad. Alright, uh... This looks awful. I'm gonna have to mulligan this. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. We are playing three colors, aren't we? Uh... This is pretty bad, too, and I really don't like mulliganing to five. Like, at least we get to play an Iron Root Warlord. Just throw Meteor Golem on the bottom. Hope to just go Island Island as our draws. Yeah, it's it's a bad keep, but there are few five-card hands that are playable at all. Evolving Wilds will start it off from our opponents. A very nice card. Let's them make sure they have the correct colors of mana. They are picking up a... What, what are you picking up? I'm picking up a swamp. Alright, black, green from our opponent. Starting off a season of growth. Expect to see a lot of pump spells to draw a lot of cards. And if they are lucky, expect to see a bunch of rabid bites to kill our creatures and draw cards. Audacious Thief is going to start it off. 
That is a 2-2. Whenever it attacks, they draw a card and lose a life. Fortunately, I have a 1-5. When I say fortunately, I should say unfortunately, because my 1-5 cannot block it and kill it. It can just block it. So they still get to draw the card, but I don't take damage at least. But, it, I mean, it's still pretty awful. It looks like they just don't want to attack into the Warlord, which is fair enough. I had four mana open. That clearly means that I'm saving a bunch of pump spells to play at instant speed. Opponent. Alright. They figured it out. They figured it out that I, I'm actually just a doofus with a three-color deck and no islands. Alright. Agonizing Siphon on my Warlord. He dead. Oh my god, I drew three of my four planes. Oh, this is just getting better and better. It's, it's just... It's the best. Hey, maybe I can hard cast Safara before I can cast any of my blue cards. That would be incredible. I don't think I'll survive that long, but ooh. Maybe it'll happen. Alright, here's a 5-4. They probably just have like a murder or something at this point. If not, at least like a blade brand. Yeah. Yeah, this guy's just getting blade branded, but I can't not block. Especially because I've already drawn like 5,000 cards off of the Audacious Thief. They draw, they draw even more because it died because of Molder Vine Reclamation. Opponent just has a lot of cards. And that's just not going to stop. There's another Audacious Thief. Maybe they just... Wow! They just don't have any removal. They're just like, whatever. I mean, I've got a thousand... A thousand cards. If it dies, I gain a life and draw another card. I can just play another thief afterwards. We'll be fine. Alright, here we go. Maybe... Maybe we're starting to get back in this. I'm going to play an Octoprophet. Now I have two good blockers. Ooh, Meteor Golem. I do like you. How much mana do I have? One, two, three, four, five. Sorry, six? I can't math? Yeah? Meteor Golem in a forest is seven mana, and then I can hard cast Safara. Alright, alright. You've, uh. You've convinced me. I said to myself. Oh boy. Unfortunately, I still am not going to have double blue for like a century. Uh, th that was something to consider in the way that I scried there. Like, now I'm just... No, I'm not going to hit a blue. Alright, Moldervine, Reclamation. Letting them draw a card off of this Bone Splinters to kill my Ceratops. Sad day, but at least I still have the 3-3 to block with. Right? Right, guys? Please? Double Rapid Bite. I'm ready. It's coming. It's Blade Brand time. Or maybe I actually get to keep an Octopus on the board. My one ally. What is happening? I'm not sure. Opponent is thinking and eyeing all of the cards. Alright, they're playing a Mammoth Spider. You know, my opponent has 18 cards left in their deck, and I have 27? <laughs> oh my god. Well, let's see if they have murder yet. I don't see how they could not. They have drawn nine more cards than me. Oh no, alright, well, that's a mythic rare that destroys a creature. They just have to sacrifice their wolf, and then destroy my Safara. So that feels pretty awful. Yep. Yep. Alright, Mammoth Spider gets to get in there, because a 3-5 is a lot bigger than a 3-3. But, at least Blood Burglar can't hit me here. 
They've played a Greenwood Sentinel as well. That is a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, which also gets blocked by my octopus. No, it does not. They just have a bunch of bone splinters. All right. I have been agonizing, siphoned, bone splintered, bone splintered again. Cavalier of Knighted. I don't appreciate it. I'm at three life. I can sleep paralysis something, or I can meteor golem something. But you know what else I can do? I can die on the crack bat when I do either of those. Because if I play Meteor... I guess if I play Meteor Golem, destroy Mammoth Spider and Chump Block Cavalier of Night, I could potentially survive. But if I play Meteor Golem and destroy Cavalier of Night, they get to use the ability to return a creature with converted mana cost 3 or less from the grave to the battlefield to kill me with. That would just be one of their 2-2s. Two uh, and if I sleep paralysis the Cavalier, then I take five. So we'll play the only thing that could maybe in an alternate universe allow me to survive, which is to Meteor Golem the Mammoth Spider. Okay. Well... Meteor Golem took a nap at a very inopportune moment, so that will end that game. That was insane. That audacious thief. I'm sorry, those audacious thieves. It's like a whole clan of the little dudes. They just like busted open my vault and just hoarded everything. That was bad. Alright. Well, this... <sighs> I'm not mulliganing this. I've got Ramp with the Leaf Kid Druid and Anticipate to draw whatever I don't draw in the next couple turns. Opponent starts off with a Healer of the Glade, gaining a few life. And now I have a Netcaster Spider on turn three. See, see sometimes uh, it all just works out. It's all just great. Alright, you see, look at this. Look at this curve. I get to go Leafkin Druid into Thicket Crasher. Or, you know, just naturally Druid Spider Thicket Crasher. Um, I mean, if you got a pump spell, go for it. I can just naturally cast Netcaster Spider and then Thicket Crasher anyway, so I don't need the Leaf Can Druid a whole lot. So I was just going to make them have the pump spell, and they didn't, so I got to just stop that damage, which was very nice. Alright, Thicket Crasher is getting in there. Am I playing against Mono Green, or am I playing against someone who is mana screwed? I don't know. Alright, Loaming Shaman is coming in. That is a 3-2 against my 4-3, so I will not block. Alright, what's going on? Opponent is thinking. Checking out their hand. Another Loaming Shaman. All right. The Loaming Shaman Squadron is here. Now I can play Netcaster Spider and Anticipate during their turn. Got to be all fancy about it. You don't play Anticipate at sorcery speed. It's not fancy enough. All right, we are playing against another blue-green deck. It is the mirror match. They have three cards left in their hand at this point. They now have one island and four forests. We'll see what they've been holding on to. <laughs> Unless it's a bunch of double blue stuff like Air Elemental, then we'll still have to wait a little bit. 
Shifting Ceratops. All right. I've got one of those as well. However, he did not show up to the party quite yet. Luckily, I do have a 4-3 on board that can just trade for that Ceratops, so we're not in that bad of a spot. These Loaming Shamans are actually worse for us than the Ceratops, because we can't block those well. I'm going to go ahead and anticipate now, in case I draw a 0 mana card to combat these Loaming Shamans. Unfortunately, we did not do that. Alright, we've got Gift of Paradise, so that I can cast Safara. That's a pretty powerful pick. I can also pick Ironroot Warlord. That lets me just start pooping out 1-1s to block these things. This is a really difficult choice. All three of these cards actually are quite good, and they are all fancy styles. Look at that. Who would have thought? Um, what do I do? What does one do? Given these choices, one picks Iron Root Warlord. That's what I do. All right, no blocks. Because like Iron Root Warlord, even if I don't have the mana to start pumping out the one ones, at first, if they don't have removal for him immediately, he's just a straight up four or five by himself. And of course, my next card was a Johnny. So <laughs> Shuffler's just like, hey, hey, she picked up that Gift of Paradise. Could I cast uh, these cards here? But that's okay. I'm playing my Warlord. I have a 4 or 5 out now, so they can stop attacking me with their Loaming Shamans. And we can sit here and talk about our feelings. Right. At 10, they are at 23, and I am passing the turn to them. What say you, Tezzeret? Alright, three cards in hand. One island, four forests on board. You got. Alright, they are heading into combat. A little bit scared of a pump spell, but oh my god. Alright, well. We're about to get pump spelled. But they can only save one of their creatures. So I'm guessing, like, if they have a pump spell here, the choice is between saving Ceratops or killing Warlord. And of course, you know, saving a Loaming Shaman, but who cares about Loaming Shaman? Uh, of course, they could also just have two pump spells. Uh, but I think if they have two pump spells, I'm just... Uh, just kind of screwed. And you know what? Netcaster Spider is not holding anything off, so I'm going to block with Netcaster Spider as well. Oh! Or they just wanted to get aggressive? Is my Warlord going to survive? Maybe they just had, like, rabid bites and they were counting on something surviving to finish things off. That would be fantastic. I have no idea what's in their hand, but I'm just going to have that be my headcanon here and pretend that I'm a genius. All right. Octo Prophet is coming down. We're going to scry some cards looking for a planes or a Gift of Paradise. Ooh, baby. All right, that's Gift of Paradise. We're going to put that right on top as well as the Boreal Elemental because we can always use some more friends. All right. Uh, I'm going to attack for 3, because worst case scenario, I can block with a 3-3. Three, three. Next turn. Alright, we got more than enough mana to play Gift of Paradise and a Johnny in the same turn, and then follow it up with Safara. So that will be the plan. Pulse of Marasa. It's going to pick up these Shifting Ceratops again, so they now have the 5-4 back into their hand. That's a little bit of a problem, for sure. Not the worst thing in the world, I just have to, like, not attack next turn. Uh, so I can play a Johnny and create a 2-2, two -two, and that will make Iron Root Warlord a 4-5. So the Warlord can trade with the Ceratops if need be, and if not, I can just double block it with a 3-3 three -three and a 2-2. Two -two. We shall see what occurs. Alright, Ceratops has haste. We're going to take five to the face. That is a lot to take, but I need to keep these creatures on board. 
to make sure that my Warlord is a 4-5 next turn. Alright. Bam. Gift of Paradise. I'm gonna throw it on an island. Gain some life. And a Johnny. And a dude. A pure soul and no attacks. Others. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I am a little bit sick and I didn't even notice it until I started doing this video. And now my nose and my throat uh, are just insanely congested. And they probably were all day, but I didn't notice until I started talking nonstop for like an hour straight. So, my bad. That's the life we live in, man. Allergy time. Allergy time is all times. Alright. What? What say you, opponent? You have one card left in your hand. And I have a Johnny. I believe I have the upper hand. What is this? What is this? What is this? Is this a fancy trick? Oh shit, oh my god, I can't block with Octoprofit. Because it's got Pro Blue! Oh, yeah, so I have to do the Warlord block. I was going to do the Warlord block, and then I was like, wait a sec, it's better to block with Octoprofit the 2-2. But that's not an option. Alright, um... So Scorch Spitter, if I make another 2-2 here, Scorch Spitter straight up just gets to kill a Johnny, so I can't do that. So I guess Safara. Woo! Gain some life. Woo! Alright, we're going crazy now. Three threes. I think we might just win this game out of nowhere. We've gotten a Johnny and a Safara on the board now. They've got one card in their hand and a 1-1 one, one, and a 1-2 on the board. Going to be an uphill battle for our opponent, regardless of the current life total status. Alright! We got one. We played both of our bombs that game. Did we play both of our bombs in every game we won? Because that doesn't feel fair at all. I don't know. I have the short-term memory of a goldfish. Is that a thing? Is that a fact, or is that like Snopes has made a gigantic article about how stupid that fact is and how wrong it is? I don't know. Alright, two wins, two losses. Uh... The, n the nostril situation uh, is getting to a point <laughs> where I might just straight up just draw my opener and just slam concede and end the video. Nah, it's it's not that bad, but... Uh, you know, if I do something really stupid that gets me killed, it was actually on purpose. Because uh, I got a... Uh, I don't know. Fix fix my health body situation. What am I doing? Oh, I have to drag it. <laughs> I was just trying to click on it to put it there because I was playing some Magic Online earlier for Chaos Drafts. So I got used to that. Which is weird because I mulliganed a lot today. So you'd think that I would have a hang on this. But, but no. Alright, so anyways, this hand looks awful to keep, but the plan is for Anticipate to hit a forest. Like... The odds of us not seeing a forest in the first 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, in the first 12 cards, I think is pretty low. So, you know, if we don't hit a forest in the first 12, I will gladly just lose. But we did, so we got there. All right, and now I'm scared. I guess they only have a 1-1 one, one, and a 2-2. Two, two. I'm just always scared. All right, Vial of Dragonfire is here. 
So that'll just boop a Risen Reef if I play one, so I guess we're just gonna play a Spider. I don't play Gift of Paradise here. Like, yeah, sure, I can Gift of Paradise into a Johnny, but a Johnny on an empty board is not very good. Like, I would play a Johnny, minus two of them to make my 2-2, two -two. they would just shoot the 2-2 two -two with the Vile and then kill a Johnny, which just seems awful. So I, I gotta hold up on a Johnny until I can maybe have a creature or two on the board before I play him. All right, uh, I'll just play another spider. I'm just gonna keep playing spiders until one of them survives. All right, well, is this getting viled or are you pump spelling? Oh no, all right. That was the worst pump spell they could have had for me, because it's a pump spell that stays permanently, which means they actually get some value out of it. Forever. Well, alright, Risen Reef then. I guess that maybe that was... That was probably the turn I should have just went and gift the Paradise Greenwood Sentinel, because then that gives me an excuse to get the gift of Paradise on the board. Because I actually get to use all five of the mana. Alright, now I'm just dying to a... <laughs> dying to a wolf token pretty quickly now. I guess we'll just do the Gift of Paradise thing now. And make a Tree Folk 1-5 blocker. To potentially block that wolf. Unless they drew another removal spell. All right, what, what do you have? All right, we're taking one, because I don't want to trade one five for one one. And embodiment of agonies is what they have. That is a three, three, flying death touch. That's a problem. Ah. Uh, Guess I'll play a 3-4 flyer so that I can block that thing. So now I can block the 4-4 and the 3-3 three, three flyer. So now, yet again, just Sedge Scorpion gets in there. Or they just have pump spells galore, but... We don't really have any choice except to make these blocks, so we make these blocks. Alright, nice. They didn't have any pump spells. Another Gift of Paradise. I can't play a Johnny and then Gift of Paradise, which is a little lame, because then I can't turn my dude into a 3-3. I can play Gift of Paradise and then a Johnny, or I can play Gift of Paradise and Greenwood Sentinel, or I can play Greenwood Sentinel and a Johnny. Uh, that might be the best play. Greenwood Sentinel and Johnny? Did you just auto-tap my gift of... Oh, you fool. Why? Why do I ever let the auto-tapper do anything? And then I just put it on my planes, because when I hovered over, it looked like it was going to use the two islands in the forest, and I'm an idiot. And so I was like, oh, so it's just going to auto-tap those, so I should put it on the other one. But if I had played it and then targeted a forest or an island, it wouldn't have used whichever one I targeted. So now I only have two white instead of three white. That's that's what happened there, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. <sighs> we could have been in a way better spot here. I could have cast a fart. Oh, wait, no, I have it. Oh, my God. I'm delusional at this point. Um, if you were unaware of that fact. But I don't know how you would be. I have two Gifts of Paradise on board. I'm fine. I'm actually fine. I mean, I'm probably dead, but, you know, I can cast Safara, so there's that. Whee! I'm losing my mind. And my marbles. And everything. Just like I lost all of my money in that game against a million audacious thieves. They took everything from me. The 
this has been a weird video. This is not what I expected to do today. I just was like, you know, this isn't what I normally record. Normally I record right when I get off work and then I upload it the same day. But today I had to do a whole bunch of other stuff. And then all of a sudden it was like 9 o'clock and I was like, well, I got to go to sleep in like an hour and a half. Uh, which is, a, you know, exactly how long a draft takes. So I haven't recorded a draft video in forever. Let's just do it right now. And now I'm just going insane. And I know... I know now why I don't, um, I don't stray from the schedule, because apparently, apparently weird things happen if I just decide to make a video right before I go to bed. I'm also slightly ill. Alright. Um, Johnny seems like a bad idea right now still. I want to get another dude on this board. Oh my god! Alright, this deck is sick. This deck is unbeatable. If we didn't lose two rounds, that was fake. This deck just actually cannot lose a single round. We only got 19 cards left. Ooh, there's the scoop! There's the scoop. So far as ridiculous. GG. Could you imagine, though, if I didn't have two Gifts of Paradise on the board? And I just Gift of Paradise on my planes when I needed a planes plus a Gift of Paradise to cast Safara, because that's what I imagined happened. It didn't, but it very well could have. Oh my god. Three wins and three losses? I don't even know anymore. We're doing things. I swear to god, every game I win, a Johnny plus Safara. We didn't even play a Johnny in that last one, but we had him. He was there. He witnessed. Uh, I can't keep this. I, I just can't. I can definitely keep this. This hand can absolutely. Just went out of like nowhere. Um. I feel feels real bad to drop that Octo Prophet, but we've seen how important Gifted Paradise is. It's like just without Gifted Paradise, I just don't play bombs. It, sh it just doesn't happen. So, I want to have the ability to play bombs in the future. Alright. Remember earlier when I said you don't main phase anticipate? <laughs> and then I've done it like a thousand times just to make the turns go faster. Yeah. Alright, so I picked the elemental there. That way, if they don't kill Risen Reef here, they just get to feel really bad. Oh my god, we actually just have the perfect elemental deck. Nothing else in this deck is the plan. The plan was obviously just Risen Reef Elementals. Because look at this. Look at this lunacy. Alright, Sage's Row Denison from our opponent. Well, now I'm a little scared we're just going to get milled out. But as I've said before, that's my secret. I'm always scared. Alright, Cloud can see here. Let's just draw, like, a bunch... Let's just help them mill us faster by drawing cards. Ooh, they're just sending them in. All right, no blocks. I was excited because I was like, I can kill Sage's Rodenizen at the cost of everything. All right, they have their own Cloud Conceer and it's going to mill me. Mills my meteor golem. Get out of here. Get that's nonsense. All right, Oriel Elemental. Oh my God, we have six mana. This card's ridiculous. Have you guys played with Risen Reef before? That card's not fair. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna play Boreal Elemental. Just play the biggest boy. Oh, look at that. Now we have seven mana. I almost have just natural triple planes. Ridiculous. Alright, let's pass the turn. I didn't need this Gift of Paradise, I lied. I have Risen Reef. It's all I need. Silverback Shaman. Hello, monkey man. No attacks, because now I have a 3-4 on the board, and I draw another elemental. Let's go. Let's go. Leaf Kindruid. Woo! If Caster Spider is drawn, I will play an island. I will go boop. 
Uh, boop. Boop. Gift of Paradise on an island. Ticket Crasher. What are you gonna do? Look at all these cards. Look at this. More land. Look at that. Savage. Send in the 3 4. Do I send in the 3 4? They can hit me back. I'm at 17. I'll let them hit me back. Let's send in the 3 4. Bam. Three damage. We've played like all of our elementals. We've played five. I have six or seven. Oh, hi, Gargos. You're a fair card. Oh my god, but Johnny, though? <laughs> uh, um. Gargos is very bad. For me. He doesn't fly, though. I can just play a Johnny and just gain like 5,000 life if I want. Just play Drawn from Dreams, try to draw the uh, flyer, because that might be the win con. I can play them both, so let's just play Drawn from Dreams first. Oh, hi. Hi, Meteor Golem. <laughs> this is not fair. Gargos only triggers on spells. Oh my god. And we have exact... No, we've got more than enough. We got one more than enough. We almost just had exact mana to kill him. That would have been hilarious. It actually just turns out we have a million mana. I can't believe we had the mana to play Drawn from Dreams and Meteor Golem in the same turn. Risen Reef, my boy. Right, forest. Hello. A Jenny! Look at this! Gained so much life. Peace, we must fight for a better tomorrow. Could also just play a bunch of dudes. And then if they don't have like a Wrath of God, then like what what you got? Our true strength lies in our friendships. We're just gonna continue the poke you for three a turn plan. Always. I think I forgot last turn though, because they didn't lose any life. I totally just forgot to attack last turn, I think. I'm not going to play the Netcaster Spider, because, like, who knows? Maybe they go Gift of Paradise, Gift of Paradise, Planar Cleansing. Oh. Is that worse? <laughs> oh my god, Gargos is back. Hello again, Gargos. And now they've got the two mana to just play a Rabbit Bite. Stupid. Gargos is a dumb card. We're dumbs. Shifting Ceratops is not Meteor Golem. Because my other Meteor Golem got milled. Okay, well... I guess I let them fight and kill my Boreal Elemental? Yeah... Yeah, but if I uh, if I sleep paralysis, then they still get to use its ability. Oh god, this is awful. Unsummon their own cloud seer to allow Gargos to fight me, dude. Okay. I mean, yeah, they just, they probably don't have a Wrath. Let's just play around the Gargos that's actually on the board and just gain a bunch of life. I sense the good in your heart. Until we can exile their entire board. Because that, that's cool. If I sleep paralysis, I just lose a creature of their choice. But if I wait, I lose a creature of my choice on Trump blocks. So I'm just going to lose a creature of my choice. Which is probably going to be Risen Reef at this point, because I don't think I have any Elementals left. I guess I have Air Elemental, and that's... I think that's it. 
I'm getting milled again. This is the issue. What if I just mill out and die? Well, yet again, if they have a pump spell, I'm pretty screwed. You know what? You figure it out, you absolute heathen. There we go. That is the 100% correct block, and there is no way you can convince me otherwise. That's the one. <laughs> we get to watch them desperately attempt to sort them into the order they want them to die. Oh boy, this has been a day, or should I say a night, of Magic the Gathering here. Oh boy. I don't know what's happening, but my creatures are moving around. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, lord. I mean, at least it fights. Like, it literally fights. So, the Gargos is gonna die. But probably so is my whole field. Alright, everything except my buddy there. The 3-3. Three, three. I mean, I'll take it. Like, now we just don't have to deal with Gargos anymore? So... Here's a bunch I of dudes. Proud of those who walk beside me. You have, what are those last two cards? Aww! Get another sleep paralysis, now they just get to kill a Johnny! Ooh, they don't do it! They let him stay. Good. Friendship feeds the soul. I'm not gonna attack yet. I've got eleven cards left in my deck. I think they're trying to just mill me. <laughs> I've got eleven cards, and they have a Sage's Rodenas in here. All right, they attacked this turn. You test my patience. I don't like these draws. These draws are not fun. Woo! Alright. The Ajani Pride Mates are as big as they're gonna get before Ajani himself dies. Uh, and also, I'm now at 15 life more than my starting total, so if I had a Reach creature, I could now exile my opponent's entire field, but it's too late. Because Ajani is going to die. Nice. Got to hit them for a quarter of their life total. We've now got triple planes at the ready for the Safara hard casts, but did I already play her earlier and just totally forgot? Nope. I no Safara yet. Too much. What you got? Sleep. Stop! How many sleep paralysis are you paralysing? Words. Oh my god, Lance, please no. Uh, pass. I'm at 36 life. I just have to worry about getting milled. I have nine cards left. I just need Safara to be near the top. All right, there she is. If you sleep paralysis, sleep. If you paralyze my Safara, I will be very mad. I will be very mad as they plummet her. happening what is this all right boreal elemental mills me too 
Oh my god, these all went... Why, why was... Why were those revealed? Those were my anticipate cards? Is that what happened? Oh wait, no, it's because they flipped face up when they were getting milled. I'm a total doofus. Alright, netcaster, spider. Sand and Safara. Don't have a pump spell. Oh, thank you for not having a pump spell. You appreciate that. I have five cards left in my library. Oh my god, I'm at 41 life. But my library is almost empty. Just get as aggressive as possible. Opponent needs to not play any more G-dang blue creatures ever. Period. Exclamation mark. Alright. We got a 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh, I mean, permanently tapped. But we got a 6-6 six, six, a Johnny's Pride Mate. They play an island. No blue creatures yet. Yes. Alright, I mean, I wasn't saying yes to the planes. I was saying yes to the no blue creatures. Let's go. They gotta draw a blue creature next turn. This is the last chance. Last opportunity. Oh wait, even if they draw one, I have uh, three cards left in my deck, and this guy only mills... Uh... Wait, does he mill three? No, he only mills two. I can't read things. Alright. We Did we just last second do it? With Safara? That was probably, like, literally the last time I could have drawn Safara and still won that game. So that was sick. Let's do it, Safara. Woo! Alright, how many rounds is that? Is that four wins, three losses? 62 life? I don't know why I threw the life on the end there. It's just a thing. I saw it. I said it. Ooh, look at all this. I think I leveled up. Got a... It's a little booster. Alright. Four. Oh god. Oh, I didn't want to do that yet. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to open the pack. I wanted to open the pack. I like to throw the pack openings into the random, like, whenever I get them in the video. Rather than making their own video. Alright, here we go. Pack opening. Let's do it. All of my words are now an incoherent rambling mess. I don't know if you can even understand me when I'm talking like this. Alright, Temple of Malady. Temple of Malady. Cool. Good card for constructed. So it's a good thing to have in your collection. Alright, four wins and three losses. Four wins and two losses. Let's not... <laughs> let's not just say we've lost before the game has even begun. Four wins and two losses. We are slightly above the average record. Which, you know, that's where I always want to be in life. I can be slightly above average. Fine with that. Alright. This hand's not fantastic, but we have all of our colors. We have a Leafkin Druid. And, I mean, that, that's literally all this hand has going for it, but I, I thought I'd mention it. Now, we can cast Shifting Ceratops next turn, which is actually a lot going for this hand. Alright. The mirror begins. Here is my Ceratops. Where is your Ceratops? Here it comes, come on. Come on, planes, Shifting Ceratops. Do it. Come on. Come on, opponent. You know you know you want to. You know you got it. Alright, well, first of all, that's not a planes. I thought we agreed. 
on the mirror. Perhaps they will play a different thing. It looks like they have. They have played a Frost Lynx and tapped down my Leafkin Druid because Shifting Ceratops has protection from blue. I can gift the Paradise or just play a spider. I'm just gonna play spider. And I'm just gonna boop them with a dino. They could take five or lose their Leafkin Druid, so I think they're gonna take five. Oh, alright. Got to kill the Leafkin Druid. I guess that probably just means they don't have anything to ramp into here. Just have a four drop on curve and probably a five drop on curve, stuff like that. Sleep Paralysis on my Netcaster Spider so they can go ahead and get in for their own damage. Which they decide not to do, I guess, to be kind. Because they can't block Shifting Ceratops with the Frost Lynx, so I don't really know. I guess if I had another Haste creature or something, uh, I don't know why I did that. I'll just give him Haste. <laughs> If I had another haste creature or something, then then there would be a reason to keep the Frostlings back. Healer of the Glade. That is definitely just going to chump block the Ceratops. Or both of them will. Probably just one. Alright, now they're sending him the Frostlings. But what do I mean both of them will? I am just really forgetting that shifting Ceratops... As pro blue. Alright, we're gonna go like this, and we're gonna play... No! 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 It auto-uses that mana too? I thought... Oh my god. I thought I could put them up there and then click on the manas I wanted. But it auto-uses that too. How do I spin... Wait, how... If I just click on that mana there to use it, it doesn't know what I'm using it on. I have to put the card up there and then choose what mana I'm using. So how on earth would I save the double green to give this trample? Whatever, I mean, I guess I'm just playing a spider instead. But my plan was to tap this for two green... Oh, I guess I guess I should have just given it Trample before I did anything else. Just tap this for two green, spend one of the green on Trample, and then spend white and blue on Risen Reef. I guess that's how you get around that. But I was like, in order to play Risen Reef first and then give that Trample, I don't know how to spend that floating mana the way I want to. Because I have no way to tap this and get two green and cast Risen Reef without tapping all of my lands immediately and just having all the mana floating. Does that make any sense? Nothing I say makes sense, but... No. I'm just gonna blow up the air elemental. Did I even attack last turn? Yeah, I did. They just chop blocked with the 1-2. Another Metropolis Sprite. My brain is way too mush for this kind of, like, mana-tapping conspiracy shit. Alright. A Johnny. Doesn't matter if your brain is mush if you have a bunch of bombs! Um... I just... Just play my boy. Nah. Uh, I'm just gonna poke him a bunch with some flyers. Let's just play this giant thing instead. Get a Safara and a Meteor Golem. This deck is so fair. I like it a lot. I, mean, I've, I gotta be completely honest, though. I lost a lot. <laughs> I got very close to losing a lot of the games that I won, and I've lost two rounds. This deck is not... is not fantastic, but... Man, does it have an endgame. Alright, they've got a gigantic stack of blue creatures, and I have a five power creature with pro blue. So I believe that this is the concession attack. If I have ever seen one myself. Do you, there we go. Thank you, Spider-Man. All 
All right, well, that game, Shifting Ceratops pretty much got there all by himself because he was pro-blue against a deck with primarily blue creatures. Let's see, they have five blue creatures and two green throughout this game. So definitely just not a good matchup for our opponent. It's got to feel pretty bad. There is a befuddle. And one card in hand, one green mana up. Fog is not in this set. That is going to be lethal. And I am not going to cast one of my many bombs here. I'm just going to end it. There's the scoop. All right, we got five wins, two losses, and it's super late. And I got to go to bed soon. So let's win fast. All right, Arboretum Elemental. Dope. Well, we really did it. We really... <laughs> we really came back in these final rounds here. Very rough beginning. I think we got those first two losses pretty quickly. But we're at five wins now. Which is nothing to scoff at. This hand is not super capable. I guess literally any basic. And this hand's pretty spicy. Because then I have Gift of Paradise, which is enough mana for Boreal Elemental. Or I just have Risen Reef first. But I'm going first here, like... Oh... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna mulligan it. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, the Shuffler's coming in for some Karmic Justice! It is tired of our shenanigans. Alright, so we got we had to mull three times, which is definitely not good. Uh, so, so far, we're not gonna cast you for a long time. You've gotta get out of here. And oh, I don't want to put any more of these cards away. I don't want to... Oh, this hand looks awful. This hand looks slightly better. Uh, I don't like it. wanted to have a lot of cards, and now I have less cards. All right. We are playing against white, starting off with a loyal Pegasus. All right, well, they have come to end my suffering with a super fast aggro deck that I will just die to in three turns. And then I will go to bed. It's going to be nice. No. Opponent, no. You're not supposed to play loyal Pegasus and follow it up with nothing. I wanted to go fast. All right, there's Anticipate. What you got? Oh yeah, you don't you don't reveal off anticipate. I am a fool. All right, we're just gonna draw everything except for islands here. Just gonna draw every other basic in our deck before we draw any more islands. All right, well I mean that's not at least that's not another non-island land. All right, we are uh, in a pretty bad position here. It is starting to look like we're gonna get crushed. Those are two pretty aggressive flyers. One of them specifically makes all of their other flyers cheaper, which means I expect to see a lot more flyers. Here's a Heart Piercer Bow, which definitely makes Cloudkin see your uh, mincemeat by Cloudkin. Who accomplished your task. Drawing me cards, and now you're dead. As am I, probably? Oh, wow. Ooh. This really is the Divine Justice game here. This this is the, the Shuffler's Divine Wisdom. Shall not play off-color bombs. <laughs> you will not play off-color bombs with no justice. You must lose some games to your terrible mana base. Which is absolutely fair. That is how my dealt... my dealt... I can't even speak anymore, okay? That's how my deck... is... built. Part of the downside... of picking up those powerful off-color bombs in that last pack is that my mana base is going to be terrible and is going to screw me over sometimes. So this is absolutely... the risk that comes with the reward, shall we say. And it is also what is going to end... 
I was gonna say my suffering, but it's not like suffering. It's just like mildly inconvenient. <laughs> Cause I am I'm starting to get a little, a little, a little tired a little bit. May have been the whole video. I don't know why I chose to record it this time. That's on me. I'm a four life. I'm probably dead next turn. I should have um should have chump blocked the four for it so that I could potentially live this turn. Uh because now I can't. Because they just have four in the air. I was not paying enough attention. Looks like it doesn't matter. Those are two cards that don't help us at all. Sick. We got to do two more damage to our opponent before we got murderized by a bird wizard and a pegasus. Well, that is going to end the gameplay for today, but we get a prize pack to open up, maybe even two if we're super lucky. There's a pacifism. We are getting crushed by a fantastic aggro deck here. Just getting absolutely demolished. I'm going to take that all to the face. It is dead time. See, I definitely wouldn't have mattered because I would have trump blocked with the 2-2. Two, two. I wouldn't have the 2-2 two, two anymore. Then I would have played my 3-3 three, three, and they would have pacified it. So I would have still just died next turn. But I should have blocked that 4-4 four, four to potentially have a chance. So it looks like just one pack. We did not get super lucky and get the double pack. Let's see what's inside. We have... An uncommon wild card. Oh, yeah. And we got a rare wild card from opening a bunch of packs. And a common wild card. That's what I like to see. Wild cards is the shit. And Starfield Mystic is not. <laughs> Starfield Mystic is cool and could potentially be quite good. Uh, we don't know anything about the mechanics of the next set, other than that it is Throne of Eldraine, based off of fairy tale folklore, grim fairy tales... Uh, the Knights of Camelot style tells as well. So maybe there'll be a lot of enchantments in that set. Maybe we'll have Sagas return. Or some kind of storybook style cards. Um, some kind of story style cards uh, told via enchantments. So it could be pretty good if there actually ends up being a decent enchantment theme in the next set. But if not, then we'll probably see an enchantment theme somewhere soon. We could even see a return to Theros soon. So, who knows? Anyways, for now, this card doesn't really do anything at all. <laughs> well, it has been a strange but fulfilling draft. I appreciate you all taking that journey with me. If you stuck around this late in the video, that's super weird. Because um, most of the time, most of the time, feel like my videos are quite different <laughs> from the general tone that was held throughout this one. So, if you watched all the way through this video, either just... I don't know. I don't know, man. Either you're like totally new to the channel and you thought this draft was I, or even weirder, You've watched all my other drafts, or not all of them, but you've watched some of my other drafts, and then you watched this, and you were still like, you know, this is not the usual thing, but stick around anyway. So, I appreciate that. Either way, you know, I'm probably, it's probably just a headspace kind of thing. This video was probably just very similar to all of my other drafts, and it just feels different because my mind is in a different place. Yeah. That's what it is. I feel... I don't know. This... Oh my god! This draft lasted an hour and 50 minutes! No wonder I'm so tired. Oh. <laughs> well, I appreciate you for watching. Sorry I got pretty weird there, near the end. And I'll see you again soon for more drafts. 
and other arena content. I don't even know what the next planecation is, but I'm going. I'm going there. I'm getting that full art basic, completing the set. And... Yeah, until then. Hope you all have a good time in life, and I certainly will try. I will see you later.